Sidechaining has existed for a long time in the hardware world, but has only recently made inroads into software plugins, mostly thanks to the VST3 specification. The goal of sidechaining is to give additional control over how you use an effect. A plugin that offers sidechaining includes a standard audio input, but also has a second audio input. This second input allows audio other than the primary audio input to control some aspect of the effect's sound. In hardware, this second input is a physical connector. In software, this second input is a separate plugin that gets dropped into a track which basically provides a send to a particular plugin. One classic example of side chaining uses a noise gate. The typical noise gate's control input connects to its audio input so that the gate responds to the input signal level. The gate opens if the level exceeds a certain threshold and closes if the level is below that threshold. By disconnecting the control input and allowing it to receive external signals, an audio signal separate from the one feeding the noise gate's input can trigger the gate. For example, a drum track's output could provide the sidechain key signal for a pad going through the noise gate. This effect locks the pad to the drum track's rhythm, turning it from a sustained to a percussive sound. Let's hear what sidechaining can do for narration. Not only can you hear the loud rock background music, but it really competes with the voice. However, note that we've inserted a sidechainer in the narration track and a compressor in the music bed track. The sidechainer is essentially a send from the narration track. By setting the compressor to listen to the sidechain, then bringing up the level, the voice ends up triggering the compressor. Therefore, when the vocal is happening, compression kicks in, which brings down the level of the music bed track. Let's give it a try. Let's throw in some vocals to add some narration. Note that whenever I talk, the music goes down in the background. That's exactly what we want to have happen. Here's a somewhat more advanced side chaining application that gives the hyper compressed drum sound you hear on some dance music cuts. We'll accomplish this by controlling a drum track's compression with its own snare drum as a side chain control signal. To get this control signal, we'll duplicate the drum part and insert a side chainer. The side chainer has a built-in high pass and low pass filter, so we can tune the filter to emphasize the snare. Let's solo the control signal, send the output to the master bus so we can hear it instead of to the compressor side chain input, and adjust the filter. The low cut filter reduces the kick drum, while the high cut filter reduces the cymbals and hi-hats. The object is to isolate the snare as much as possible in the control signal. Now, let's work on the compressor end of things. We'll turn on the compressor first. Because of the huge amount of compression, the sound is very squashed and indistinct. Now we'll turn on the side chain. And because the control signal is mostly snare, by setting a very short attack and release time, compression occurs only when the snare hits. There's so much compression, it almost takes the snare out of the mix. If we lengthen the attack a little bit, the compression isn't quite so tight and the drums can breathe a bit more and let through some more snare. Let's compare this squeezed effect with the uncompressed sound. And now the compressed sound again. And there you have it, your super squashed dance remix drum sound. <laughs>